What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Reggie Bryant and here we talk about personal finance and personal growth. This video is a message to anyone who is pursuing a high paying job or high paying career. The first thing I wanna say is I 100% commend anyone who's going for a high paying career. I have nothing but respect and admiration for you and I wish you the absolute best. A lot of people really don't understand what it takes to get a high paying job, a high paying career, a high paying skill. They don't tend to understand the time commitment, the amount of money that goes into this, the amount of mental capacity, strength, and perseverance that really takes to get to the point where you actually land a high paying job. And by high paying job, I'm talking 80K a year and well beyond that. And that pay is well deserved because the amount of training, the amount of skill, and the special type of person you have to be to do these types of jobs are few and far between. And with that said, these types of jobs require something of you up front. And that's what we're gonna go over in this video. Consider this to be advice to anyone pursuing a high paying job or career, because as someone who's done it and has successfully landed a high paying job, I think that the advice I'm gonna give you is extremely valuable and I wish I would have been told this when I was first pursuing a high paying job. The most obvious thing these jobs require of you is a skill. And in order to get any skill, I don't care what skill it is, it requires you to be 100% focused. And, this is, and I'm talking if you wanna get really, really good at a skill, it takes 100% of your focus. You can't be half-baked about your desire to pursue these types of careers. And you can't be lukewarm because typically if you are, when you go to your school or where you go to a trade school or you're learning whatever the skill is to get these types of jobs, you're either A, not gonna be successful in getting the degree or skill or trade that you need to get the job, or B, even if you are successful in doing it because you're that smart or that talented or gifted or whatever, your heart and your mind is probably not gonna be into that type of job and you're not gonna be happy. And the whole point of pursuing careers is to seek fulfillment, happiness, and of course, money. But anyone with a high paying job can tell you, if you have a high paying job and it just has the money but not the fulfillment and not the happiness, you are gonna be miserable. One thing that you wanna make sure of is whatever skill that you're going for is something that you absolutely want to do for whatever reason. It's not something that your friend told you to go for. It's not something that your parents, and parents have a big role in this. Be a doctor, be a lawyer. Look, what if you don't wanna be a doctor or a lawyer? Don't do it just because they're telling you to do it. I've seen too many people fall into this trap and they are miserable right now. And most of them didn't get those types of degrees nor those types of jobs. So that leads to a big waste of time. And before I get into this next topic, I wanna share a concept with you that I don't think gets talked about enough. There's gonna come a day where your parents are no longer here, no longer on this earth with you and me. And when that day comes, you're gonna be left with all the decisions that you've made throughout your entire life. And I'm telling you right now, if any of those decisions were made because of them, and that decision had detrimental effects on your life, it is not gonna be good for you. I'm just telling you right now, it's not gonna be good for you. You have to live with your decision. So if your parents told you to go to school for medicine or for engineering and your heart wasn't into that and you knew you weren't happy and you got the degree anyway and now you're stuck with a career that you didn't want and they're not even here anymore, you are not going to be happy. I'm just telling you that right now. You have to remember that you live your life for you. And so if you are pursuing a high paying career, that's good. Just make sure you're doing it for you, not for anybody else because they don't have to live with that career, you do. They don't have to go home and go into work every day in that field, you do. When it comes down to it, when the lights turn off, when the doors close, it's just gonna be you and you, you and your decisions. And you're either gonna be looking back on your decisions, regretting them, or looking back on your decisions, smiling because you know you did the right thing. And that's all I want for you. So anyway, let's dive into this. Most of you already know where you wanna go to, but for anybody who's watching this video, who's just curious about what are high paying fields, what are lucrative industries, I'm just gonna give you a few right now. So of course you can't go wrong with stuff like the medical field, right? Or the technology field or law, right? But the thing is, you don't necessarily have to be a doctor or a lawyer to make a lot of money. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. You don't have to go through that amount of schooling if you don't want to. So if you wanna go the medical route and you wanna make six figures, but you don't necessarily wanna be a doctor, so you could go the route of being a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant or something like that, they make six figures easily. 
they do require some additional schooling like up to a master's degree but that's different than doing a bachelor's than a master's than medical school you get what i'm saying it's still less schooling and you still get six figures at the end of it so of course there's also the technology field there's software engineers controls engineers industrial engineers manufacturing engineers there's so many different types of engineers like most of them can get into the six figures easily if they're in the right industry like technology for example entry level is easily in the 80s and then it goes well into the hundreds and don't sleep on management there's a lot of money in management as well so anyways not to beat a dead horse but of course the top paying industries are stuff like medicine and technology these are two things that are making the world go around. There's of course a lot of other industries, but the two that are on my mind right now are medicine and technology. And they're also two of the most fascinating to me. So if you're young right now, you really don't know which field you wanna go into. I would look at those two personally. Those are extremely lucrative, extremely fascinating, and they have a very strong future. Other higher paying jobs are within the manufacturing field. And some of them double cross over with medicine and technology, like Pfizer, for example or Tesla, for example. There's manufacturing Tesla facilities and there's manufacturing Pfizer facilities. But even at the lowest level of manufacturing, people tend to make in the 20s per hour. Supervisors easily make 80 and above. Managers easily make 100 and above. And God knows what the VPs and the presidents and CEOs make. You get what I'm saying? So I'll say that to put into perspective, not every single high paying discipline is gonna necessarily call for a degree or a certification or eight to 10 years of schooling or anything like that. There's plenty of ways to get high paying jobs without that. That's all I wanna say in this section right here about the skills and the focus. But the thing is you can't do this without focus. And the one thing that I really want you to focus on when you either A, decide which field or which profession you wanna go into, or B, once you start in your profession is what your five year plan is. And I'm about to go deep on this one because it's not something that has to really be extremely complicated, but it is extremely important that you do it. So even if you just got out a sheet of paper or put in your notes app on your phone like I did, what's your five year plan is? And if you don't know where to start, this is how you start. Year one, blank. Year two, blank, and so on and so forth. Even if you start with the blank page with just year one through five on it, now you have a place to start. Okay, year one, this is where I wanna go. And all you have to do is think about this. Where am I right now? And where do I want to be? What is the ideal person that I want to be? What traits does this person have that I don't have? How much money is this person making that I'm not making right now? Where is this person living? How is this person thinking? Is this person working out every single day? Like you really want to get, you want to dig deep into this. How, how does the future you look in terms of work-life balance, in terms of skill set? Like how far differentiated are you from your competition, from everybody else? How skillful are you? How valuable are you in your marketplace? Think about these things. You look at where you're at right now, how much you're making, where you're working, what you're doing, how your work-life balance is, how your health is, all that stuff, how your relationships are, and then you draw a line. And the years between are gonna feel the difference between you now and you then. What is your five-year plan? And the best way to start it is what are my five-year goals? You can say to yourself, all right, right now I'm making 80K a year. In five years, I want to double that. I want 160K. Or you might even say, scratch that. I want 200K. I want to more than double what my salary is right now. And then you say, okay, so if year one is 80K and year five is 200K, what are the years in between? Year two is 95K. Year three is 125K. Year four is 150K. And then it's about what are you doing in these other years? Are you going back to school to get another degree to then qualify for a higher paying job? Are you picking up another stream of income? Are you just getting so good at your skill set that you keep getting raises every year and promotions every year? Are you just that much of a high performer? Like what is getting you from here to there? How do you do it? And sometimes you might not know how to do it and that's fine. It's a five year plan. It's not every, everything is not set in stone. When I started my first job, I was making 60K a year. By year four, I had doubled that. My plans that I had initially didn't exactly get me to that goal, but I still reached my goal a year earlier than I expected to because I was grinding and I was improving myself. And I set a goal, I set a plan. Some things deviated, some things went not where I thought it was gonna go, some things epically failed. But from there you learn and you keep going and you keep growing as a person and as a professional. 
And when you make your five year plan at first, it might not seem that realistic. But the crazy part is they can absolutely happen. You just have to make sure you're making strides towards your goals. Like between year one and year two, okay, if I plan on making 15 grand more, what are the steps I'm gonna take in between to improve myself? Do I need to lock in and improve on my interviewing skills? How's about I binge watch very good YouTube channels on how to interview the best way possible? What's the mindset behind interviewing? What is the best skill set to communicate? And the thing is, this is what a lot of people don't know. Interviewing is a very valuable skill to have because not every place interviews the same way. There's certain professions that your interview isn't just sitting down where you're answering questions. Now, like sometimes your whole interview is putting up a PowerPoint presentation about previous work that you've done and what the impact has been and speaking to it for an extended amount of time like 30 minutes minimum, 30 minutes of you speaking minimum about your craft, your skills, your progressions. A lot of people don't know that, but you won't know until you're on the inside and you actually start interviewing. You don't always know what the skill set the manager that's hiring is looking for. You don't always know what mindset they want, what culture they're trying to build. That's why it's important to do your research. Maybe the reason that you jumped from 80K to 200K in five years is because you decided to go into a more lucrative industry. Like you're doing the same job type, but you're in a more lucrative industry. Like for me, I went from tires to the EV industry, meaning electric vehicles. Electric vehicles are the future. Tires are just, you know what I'm saying? They're not, there's nothing innovative about tires right now. But the future, the, the trajectory that we're going is non-combustible vehicles for the most part. You get what I'm saying? I went to a more lucrative industry. When you go to a more lucrative industry, they tend to pay more. You may start at a company that's a very well-known company, but it still could be humble beginnings for you because you're just getting your footing, you're just starting, you're a rookie, you're just getting your skill set. And the experience that you get from that place can then take you two years from then or even one year from then to a different place, a better place, a higher paying, better culture having place. And that's things to focus on because when I got started, I was making the amount of money that I expected to be making and money that I aimed to be making in my first ever job, which was higher than average pay. But I didn't have the work-life balance I wanted. So I thought of five years in the future and I thought of a person who had everything that I didn't have right then. I didn't have that much confidence as far as my career went. I didn't have the savings account that I wanted. I didn't have the passive income that I wanted. I didn't have the work-life balance that I wanted. And I didn't have the control of life that I wanted. I didn't have like the skill set that I really wanted to hone in on. So I just felt like a noob. Like I felt like I didn't really know what I was doing and I was just there collecting paychecks and learning and struggling and failing and all that stuff. That is part of the pain of entering something that is next level. When you pursue high paying jobs, that is what happened. That's what you sign up for. Sometimes you might have sleepless nights. Sometimes you might have to study a lot in school. Even when you do get the job, you might struggle. And people might come to you telling you, trying to be rude, like, you don't really belong here. What are you doing here? You should be ashamed of yourself. Who trained you? Why are you even here? You're too young to be doing this. Like, people said that stuff to me all the time. And you can either let that stuff get to you or you can let that stuff make you stronger and better and you can keep improving. So year one you, where are you at now? Year five you, what are you looking like? How is your physique? Are you working out every day? Are you reading every day? Are you assessing the skill set needed for the future job that you wanna have in five years? Like if you expect to be promoted twice within the next five years, okay, what do those jobs look like? What skills do they have that you don't have? For example, but you might need to sharpen up on your Excel skills. So what are you doing in between now and then to make sure your Excel skills are on point? From now and then you might need to learn how to program some computers or learn how to code, or you might need to learn how to lead people. What are you doing between now and then to get there? You might need to speak in front of a large audience. You might need to get buy-in from a lot of people. You, not, you might need to learn how to negotiate. What are you doing between now and then? Are you reading books? Are you talking to people in that position and see what they've done to get there? Are you asking for mentorship? Are you asking for help if you don't know something? These are the little ingredients that seem so small and so insignificant sometimes, but they are huge. It's not common, but I'm telling you, this is what separates people. There's a difference between having 
a high paying job or a high paying skill and then taking that to the next level and scaling that up and getting really, really wealthy and really scaling up your income. And speaking of leveling up, I just made a video on how to level up financially. You should definitely check that out if you're interested in this video right here. But it is extremely, extremely important that you do that. You need to have a five year plan and part of that five year plan should be investing in your 401k at your company. And part of that five-year plan should be investing in your 401k immediately in your company. Because the longer you wait, the less money is going to be there for retirement. And the whole purpose of working is to one day retire. So you've got to make sure you're on top of it. You've got to make sure that you're on top of where you want to be versus where you are right now. You have to be very, very true to yourself. You have to be very, very real with yourself and look in the mirror and look at what you're lacking. What are your flaws? What needs to improve and how you're going to improve it? And you make a plan and you do it. It's not going to be all fun and games, it's not going to be all butterflies and rainbows, but it is paramount that you do these things because that is how you're going to separate yourself from everybody else. And at the very least, you'll be separating yourself from yourself because if you didn't take these steps, you'd be way further behind. Have you ever noticed how for a lot of professionals, their salary typically stays the same like, yeah, start off making... 40,000, then I made 53,000, then I stayed at like 56 for like five years, and then I got bumped up to 70,000, and I've been doing this for 10 years, and it like hasn't really moved up that much. Have you ever noticed that? That's why I say lucrative industries. And that's also why I say make a five-year plan, because if you're on year two or year three, and you're noticing that your salary isn't anywhere near where it's supposed to be, is according to your plan, that's how you know you need to make adjustments. Do I need to relocate? Do I need to enter a different field? Do I need to just do a better job of improving my skill set? You want to look at that. And you need to ask yourself, what's the difference between the me that exists right now compared to the me that will exist five years from now? What is your house, your apartment, your car? What does your office look like five years from now? What does your physique look like? What is your mindset like? What does your bank account look like five years from now? How many degrees, certifications, or skills do you have five years from now? Do you expect to have debt five years from now or no? Do you expect to have it fully paid down? Like you really have to think about what you expect and what you want your life to look like five years from now. And I guarantee you, you start working on that. Maybe everything won't go according to plan, but I'm telling you, you will be so much further along just purely by doing the simple exercise of creating a five-year plan. It is how you prevent yourself from being stagnant and you push yourself harder to continuously improve in life at everything. And as you pursue these skills, as you pursue schooling, coaching, mentorship, reading books, taking online courses, going to trade school, mastering your craft, or just building experience throughout life, as you do all of that, as you do all of that, there will always be temptations and there will always be distractions and you have to master not giving in to those. When I was in college, I gave in to those distractions. I was all over the place. I was going to parties here and there, hanging out with girls here and there, hanging out, kicking it with the boys, you know what I'm saying, playing the game, drinking, going to events, going to parties, trying to be super live and social all the time. And my grades went down because of it. And that was my wake up call. And once I got that wake up call, I started killing it in school for the last three years. Ended with a 3.7 GPA nasty and if it weren't for that focus i wouldn't have gotten to where i am today see i underestimated how smart i was and how talented i was because i hadn't been focusing the crazy thing is you will really surprise yourself the moment you really start focusing and honing in on things and start saying no to your friends say no i, I can't i got something i have going on tonight i can't i can't go out with you tonight i, I can't i'm not really with the strikes right now hey you want to play the game no nah, not right now i'm busy i got work i gotta do you have to really have that drive and that tenacity to say no and really not care what anybody thinks about you when you do say no because the bottom line is when you go to school, when you go to better yourself, when you do anything to better yourself, whether it's reading, going somewhere, going to a seminar, going to an event, going to trade school, going to the library, it really doesn't matter. When you go to any place to better yourself, the number one goal is to better yourself. And it seems like every time you do stuff to better yourself, distractions just come. Hey, I have this, you wanna come? Hey, I'm doing this, hey, hey. All these invitations come out of nowhere, right? All of a sudden, everybody wants to have you hang out with them, it happens. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you have to have your priorities straight and saying, 
and, and understanding if you can or if you can't and having your plans set out to reach your goals. For example, sometimes you might be ahead of the game. You might have gotten three assignments done early, two projects done early, and they want to hang out. Yeah, I can hang out tonight. I got my stuff done. I'm good. I'm way ahead of the game. But if you're behind or if you're just on time with everything, then you know you can play it by ear. Like, hey, I really don't have time to do that because if I, if I go there, I'm going to be behind on this. And that could affect my future. And see, I didn't have that mindset going for me at first. At first, I was just like, yeah, I'll go. Yeah, yeah, I, th this can wait. If, even if I'm behind, I'm smart. I can, I can catch up. I work better off of pressure. Y'all ever said that to yourself? I work better under pressure. If that ain't some BS, I don't know what is. Even if you do work well under pressure, why even need to put pressure on yourself if you just got it done the right way in the first place? You get what I'm saying? And that's what I had to, I had to have conversations with myself about this because I didn't get stuff done like that either. Because I was lacking in discipline. And that's one thing you've got to have if you're even trying to be focused on anything. And as you dodge these distractions and temptations and all these other things that come to you in life, you become better. You improve. You improve your value. You improve your skill set. You improve as a person. Your intelligence goes up. You're more resilient. You have better emotional intelligence. You have better relationships. You have better money. Like you just improve. You get really, really good. And the, the word I use for really, really good is cold. You get cold at your profession. That's how you get promoted. You get consistent and you keep improving. You keep reading up on how you can get better. You study the people that have already done it. And if you have access to them, and I'm sure you do, you go up and have a conversation with them. Hey, I just want to pick your brain. I don't want to bother you too much. I just want to pick your brain. What does it take to get into your position? What is it like? What is your work-life balance like? Are you happy in your position? Do you feel like you're fulfilled? You get what I'm saying? As you get to know them better, obviously, you can ask the other questions. You don't just bombard them with all those things I just said. But these were the exact questions I used to ask my boss as I was pursuing his position. You get what I'm saying? And these are not bad questions to ask. You just need to really test the waters, get to know them first to see if they're even the type to give you this type of information. You know what I mean? Not everyone is going to be willing to give you the, the game. But those who are are going to give it to you and they're going to give you exactly what you need to get to the next level. And the last thing I really want to caution you on as you pursue a high paying career is once you get there and even before you get there, make smart financial decisions. The whole point of pursuing a high paying career is to have money. There's nothing worse than someone who's well into the six figures, like a six figure earner, but they're living paycheck to paycheck. You don't want that. So if you're going to pursue a high paying career, and you're going to put all that work in to get there. Learn about personal finances, learn about saving, learn about budgeting, learn how to get out of debt. If you have debt, learn how to invest, especially learn about investing early on. And that way you can optimize the amount of money that you will have. Because what's the point of making all that money if all you're going to do is just waste it on frivolous things that don't even matter at the end of the day? Stuff, stuff that doesn't even buy happiness. I think it's important to use money as a tool and have it as security and also have it for future endeavors. It's so important to have your money grow for you. And if you want to actually improve with that, you can check out my investing video that I just posted that absolutely no one watched <laughs> for, to my surprise, but that's okay. I know I'm helping some people, the few hundred people that watch, you know, they got value. I know not that many people on this channel are into investing, but I keep beating a dead horse because investing is going to be the one thing that takes you from here all the way to here. That's how you double and triple, quadruple, quintuple, and beyond your money by putting it into the stock market and learning the proper way to invest. So make smart financial decisions. Live below your means. Understand the cost of living in your area. Understand how much you make compared to how much your apartment or house might cost per month. Figure out how you can keep your overhead extremely low so you can just bank as much money as possible because why well, put all that work in, why well, put all that effort in, and some of y'all are going to go into debt to get these skill sets just as I did. And when you do, you want to be able to have the money to one, get out of debt, and two, stack up, invest, and take your bank account to the next level. So that way your high paying job and your high paying skill matches your bank account. And then once you've gotten your finances to a very comfortable state, then you can get the stuff that you've always wanted. Then you can get the, cause then you can actually afford it. You can get the stuff that you've always wanted. You can get the designer stuff. You can get the fancy TVs, the fancy cars, the fancy furniture, the mattress that just absorbs you <laughs> within it. You can get that stuff then, but I recommend the first, I'd say five to 10 years 
building up your finances, and then your bank account is gonna be looking cold. So that, my friend, is what I would say to anyone who's pursuing a high paying career. One, pursue it for you. Two, understand what you're getting yourself into. Understand what type of hours you'll be working. Understand what type of work-life balance you'll be having. Understand how much money you could expect to make from the lowest point to the median point all the way to the highest point so you can set an expectation so you can tell if you're being lowballed or not. Speak to people within the profession. Learn skills. Like I said, most of you already know which field you want to get into, what skills you want to learn, and what jobs you want to have. That's great. But also be learning the skills to improve, to stand out within that job, and also understand how to interview. So many schools focus on how to get the skills, but they don't focus on how to interview, how to land the job in the first place. They don't really go over how to write a resume and how to make it a standout resume. Learn how to do that. Learn how to get employers' attention. Learn how to speak out in front of them and speak to your skill set effectively and land the job of your dreams. And if having time with family and friends or just time to just sit around not doing nothing is important to you and that's something you value, make sure you understand what type of field you're getting into and what it's going to require of you. A lot of fields that are high paying require a lot of your time or a lot of your focus or a lot of your intellect or some form of all three of them. And then as you make yourself more valuable, you can then set standards like, hey, I'm not doing 60 hours a week anymore. Or you might even make the decision, hey, I'm gonna stay within the same job. I'm gonna remain being an engineer, but I'm gonna go over here to a different state or to a different city and go into a more lucrative industry that's gonna pay me what I'm worth and also give me the hours that I know I deserve. And make that five-year plan. That's the biggest piece. If you get anything from this video, make a five-year plan, please. I told you exactly how to make it in this video. Make a five-year plan and look at it every year or even every few months. Just see how you're tracking. Avoid any distractions on the way. Make sure you plan your days out. Make sure you have routines, whether it's study routines, working routines, setting routines of picking the brains of those who have gotten to where you want to get to, reading books. Set routines and expectations for yourself so you can get there, so you can act, so you're actually making strides towards your goal. Have fun every now and then, but understand that this time of your life is the time to grind, the time to improve, and time to get what you want out of life instead of just sitting on the couch all day not doing nothing. That's really what it's all about. And I guarantee you, if you're watching this video, you're probably between the ages of 18 and 30. And if that's the case, you're at the perfect age to keep grinding. Some people will ridicule me for saying that, but you don't pursue a high paying field or job or career without putting in the work. So whoever can ridicule me all they want to, but you don't get money without work, bottom line. And once you put the work in, I promise you, you'll be able to kick back, relax, and chill as much as you want to. But all I'm saying is just for a few years of your life, if you can put the work in and become really good at what you're doing and gain a skill that separates you from everyone else and you're passionate about it and you get fulfillment and happiness out of it, oh, you're gonna be on top of the world. Life is gonna get a lot easier for you just because of the sacrifice that you made up front and the perseverance that you've had up front as well. That is what I would say to anyone pursuing a high paying career. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed making it and I meant every single word that I said. I hope that you get value out of this video and I really do wish someone would have sat me down and told me all these things when I first started pursuing my high paying job. I think, it can say, I think this type of advice can save you years of frustration while also helping you optimize the amount of money that you do have from the high paying job that you pursue in the first place. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.